the classroom again, well, not in the classroom. Okay, so it looks like I am completely live. I am very excited. I have no idea who's on. I'm, I can see myself and I can also see what I'm about to show you. Um, I can see comments. So if you're able to leave me a comment, I will uh, remind you again after this. Um, just let me know you're here. Let me know you're listening. I am about to talk about one of my favorite units in all of history. Um, I've taught fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. I've even taught uh, first grade and a few science standards for second and third. And my absolute favorite always goes back to fourth grade energy, kinetic and potentials to be specific. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit about the different um, activities I do in my classroom and how my students respond. And I am gonna to try to give some type of variation if you are teaching online. Um, it's completely different. I only did online for, you know, the, the, the months that we were in quarantine last year. Uh, but before that, I was completely teaching in person. So uh, a little bit about me. I am Leanna from Love Learning STEM. Welcome. Uh, I teach I'm a STEM specialist at a Southern California school district. So I go to the different elementary schools within my district and I teach STEM to all the different kids. And this year is a little different, of course. I have all the sixth graders in um, the entire district, but my usual job is fourth, fifth, and sixth grade classrooms. And so I am very familiar with uh, fourth grade energy. It is one of my favorites, absolute favorites. And um, so let's get started. So uh, when you first try to introduce this, or when I first tried to introduce energy with my students, my fourth graders, I uh, didn't want to bring in some abstract literature or anything that the kids, students wouldn't be able to comprehend right away. So I started this um, unit with a demonstration. So this is number one. I'll probably go down a list. I do have something written down, so I stay tra on track and I mention everything. But um, so the number, the first thing that I do is do a demonstration. So I have some type of a ramp. Uh, it could be a board, a cardboard box that you have upside or sideways. It can be any type of material that you have facing this way. That way you can have a vehicle travel down. Now the vehicle could be a toy car. It can be anything you have. It can be a Lego car. Uh, truly anything. It can be objects you have. And I have one come down and then I have another vehicle or another object at the very bottom. And what I do is I put an egg on top of the, the car or object that I that is traveling down, but it doesn't have any type of restraint system. So it's a real egg. It can break. It has yolk and all of that. And the kids at this point are, ooh, ah, like they, they want to see something happen. Um, and so I, I, I get some input, what do you think is gonna happen to the car? And you know, they're all going crazy telling me what they think is gonna happen. And then we actually demo it. And while I demo it, I usually have a student volunteer, I choose randomly to do a slow motion video. Now, uh, we do the demonstration, they, they see that the egg falls down, breaks apart, breaks open. And um, we talk about a little bit why. Why did it? Why did it fall down? What happened to it? Um, what did it What did it have to do with speed? And somehow the kids get to this point where they kind of talk about cars. Well, seatbelts. If they, if the egg had a seatbelt, then it would have been much more safe. And then we talk about why. But there are still a lot of questions as to what is going on. And at this point, I let the students know, well, this is what we're gonna be studying this, this unit in science. We are going to be looking at energy. We're gonna be looking at uh, speed, um, weight, and how that affects objects when they're moving. And they're all in, I tell you, this is like, I've got their buy-in, they're so excited. And then I let them know that their very final project is gonna be a STEM challenge, which is to keep or to create some type of vehicle and to create a restraint system, which is a big word, but pretty much means seatbelt. And we talk, we go over these words later um, for the egg on top of the car. And then that's when they will have um, the car going down. And then the, the, role, the goal of that STEM challenge is to have the egg protected. 
So that's looming over their heads as we do each and every single one of our projects. And that is something that I always remind them, hey, boys and girls, remember we're learning this because we trying to, we're trying to get as much information as we can. So by the time we get to the STEM challenge, our designs are gonna rock and roll, okay? So once we do the demo, they're all excited. We go straight into uh, gestures. Gestures, vocabulary, filling them in. Um, and we, we just have fun with it. So gestures are basically like TPR, total physical response. I have a lot of English language learners, if not my entire class. Um, and what we do is the kids, I tell them the word, I give them the definition, they're writing it down, they're sketching it out, but then they create a gesture. So most of the time, uh, they, they come up with the ideas and then I'm the one that has the final say as to which one we're going with. And for example, this one, one year was kinetic energy. And this was potential energy because kinetic energy is moving energy and potential energy is stored energy. So we practice that day in and day out. And we go over the vocabulary words like energy, just energy. And some one year it was just like this. And um, so yeah, there's a few more vocabulary words and I'll talk about those later, but the very first ones we go over are energy and um, kinetic and potential. So kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is moving energy and potential energy is stored energy and all everything has energy. You cannot take it apart or take it away, um, but it is transferred. The transference of, of energy is talked about later in the unit, but we just mention it in the beginning. So once they do that, we go into reading. Um, we do quite a bit of reading in my science classes, my STEM classes, and I'm going to go ahead and share with you just quickly just what type of reading we do. I don't have any textbooks or books, so I'm going to share with you my screen. It is Google Chrome, this one. Perfect. Okay, so it just is basically... Um, like this, it's and this is a part of my digital kinetic potential energy unit. I have a freebie that goes with this, but it is completely digital and it's student paced. But as you can tell, it's just a one pager with a couple of tab images with the energy potential energy bolded, and the students can respond with their ideas and what they. Um, it's basically reading comprehension, and they also go over the kinetic energy. So this is one way, um, and if you do, if you are interested in this freebie, make sure you sign up. I believe it's in my, hello, Michelle, I see you. Uh, it is, uh, and some others that I don't see. I'm sorry, I don't know who's here unless you leave me a comment. Um, okay, and the, so the, um, Reading comprehension. So we, I give them this and they're doing a bunch of reading. And if you wanna sign up and get the freebie, it should be somewhere in the comments caption, whatever. And the, the final, the complete project is also up there as well. So once we do that, we go into this really fun um, section where, as you can tell, they're learning about the different types of kinetic and potential energy. So we go through, and instead of giving them written and uh, anything that they have to read, we just pull objects from around the room. So I basically show them a yo-yo. We go down a yo-yo, we use it, and we talk about how when the yo-yo is in my arms, it has potential energy because it has the potential to go down. And then when I let it go, then we talk about how, so let me, okay, it has kinetic energy because it's moving energy. And we do the same with like, let's say a book on a shelf. If it's on the shelf, it has potential because it can Fall, and then if it's falling, it has kinetic. And there are a couple of YouTube videos that I watch and I keep showing them year after year. So basic. And I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember a man in front of a bookcase and um, a big old bowling ball where he just lets it go and it comes back. So yeah, a couple of YouTube videos, some demonstrations in class. And then we go into some check, in, check for understanding. Uh, in person, I would give a quiz. Um, paper, pencil, it's just a benchmark assessment. Um, and online, the way we did it online last year was I basically show them this paper and they were to type in whether it's kinetic or potential energy. Um, and these are just such basic things that they need to understand. Um, when a student is sitting on a top of a slide, it should be potential and when it's going down a hill, then it is kinetic. Um, and some other ways, and at this point, 
most of the kids get it, but then there are still some kids who uh, need some extra assistance. So uh, we have SPED inclusion within our all of our classes. So I get all of my wonderful SPED students in there. And at this point, they need just a little bit, tad bit more assistance um, practice. So I pull these kids aside and then we go over these Google slides. And so basically they get to, um, and I have a set of these digital task cards for every single NGSS standard in fourth grade. And it's so awesome uh, because the kids get to, it's just simple. It says the pendulum falling down is kinetic. So they move it into the box and they see they got it correct if it's got a yellow star. Okay, so that's that. They love these slides and they see it as a game and the feedback I'm getting from other teachers is that they want to play over and over and over again. Um, so that's that. Okay. So those were two and three gestures were two reading lots of practice with identifying kinetic and potential is three and the fourth one is so fun. Uh, it's basically the let me stop sharing. So it is the kinetic, or it's not kinetic or potential, but it is the Angry, Gird, Angry Birds game. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, it's like an app game. The, the, there's like this little slingshot where they, they take the bird, or I think there's a bird in the slingshot and the kids move and then it gives them like an angle and, the, and then the bird falls in the air and it comes down. Well, this is literally what my, my kids play. And then we talk about what type of energy is being portrayed. Um, when, the, when the bird is in the slingshot going back, it is potential when it goes up in the air and down, it is kinetic, uh, huge success. Um, and I have the kids say kinetic, kinetic, or going potential, 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 kinetic. And then we do that. But it doesn't stop there. We actually go outside with my red cups, you know, the regular big old red cups. I stack them up like a, a pyramid. And then I have um, two kids with those exercise bands stretched out. And then they have a little furry ball or a furry thing that's in the middle and they stretch it out and then they let go and then they have to, you know, they're scre not screaming out, but pretty loudly exclaiming. <laughs> Potential, potential, potential. And then when they let go, it's still potential until it falls down, it's kinetic. And so this is a really fun activity that they really enjoy. Um, and then we go inside, we sketch about it, we write about it. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, it's really fun. And then we uh, go inside and then we continue. Now this, I have to mention, is uh, a few weeks long, this unit, it's the, it's the biggest topic for fourth grade energy um, for the fourth grade NGSS standard. So it takes us a few weeks. Um, if you're seeing the kids once a week, it'll take quite a few months. Okay, after you do the Hungry Birds, you can do a Kahoot quiz. You have some fun with the vocabulary again, make sure they really get uh, this concept before they move into speed and energy. And this is where we have um, some type of experiment with speed and energy. So we create paper ramps and we connect the ramps to chairs. So you have the ramp here, the chairs here. Okay. And then the kids have toy cars that are the same and we build them out of our VEX kits and it's really fun, but you can use any type of car that is the exact same. Um, it could be little NASCAR, you know, those little itty bitty ones. And then you drop them and you see, well, what happens when both of them are at high potential? And you drop them and the kids get to experience it and write it down in their notes. And then you uh, go down and then you say, well, what if they go uh, four inches down and they let the cars go? What happens then? So at this point, I have a kid on the video camera, a kid writing down observations. And of course, they're all switching within their teams every time they move down the list. Um, and this is a really fun thing to go over potential energy and the speed involved. So the higher the potential, the higher the speed. Um, uh, so the higher the car is, the faster it'll, it will go. And that's pretty much what I want them to get at this part um, before we go into pendulum. So we also use a pendulum to learn about kinetic and potential energy, namely potential energy, because the higher they hold the pendulum up, and this is where you can kind of um, create or build a pendulum using ordinary things. I know Pinterest has so many ideas, so you can get a lot of ideas. I've seen some really great ones. Um, and they just build the pendulum and they let it go and they do experiments with, 
experiments with it, timing, well, how many times did the pendulum go back and forth in 30 seconds? So this is a really fun activity. And we're getting down to the last few. Once they do pendulum, we go over, uh, well, we do check for understanding. So now at this point, we're talking about the transfer of energy. So when the pendulum is up here, it has potential, but then it transfers to kinetic. And we go over different examples and even looking back at the other examples, like the slingshot with the angry birds, we talk about the transference of energy. And then I show them this. Let me share my screen one more time. So at this point, the students have already filled out all of these pages and they are going into um, different examples. So they've already created their own. So they pull in images from the web of their own examples. So they have to think of it. And there is a little bit of reading on transfer of energy. They, they answer questions and then they get to uh, talk about the actual transfer of energy. And it says here, well, what happened with the energy? The person was first swinging and then the person is sitting now on the bottom of the swing. Explain the transfer of energy between the two pictures. So I want the students at this point to be able to talk about it in this way. Like for example, the person swinging from the swing at the, from the top of the swing it has kinetic energy because it's moving down. But the, the, excuse me, but the energy transfers to be potential energy once the person stays still on the bottom of the swing. So that's what I look for in a student's writing when it comes down to this. I know that they don't need to know uh, any calculations for fourth grade, which is great. Um, but the, at this point, I do want them to put into writing what exactly we've been doing with the experiments, the, all the different um, challenges and whatnot. And once they do this, they are pretty much ready to uh, do a choice board. And a choice board is so important before I move on to the STEM challenge because it gets them ready thinking about what all they've learned. And this is a freebie I have. I believe I gave you the link in my, in the captions but you get to uh, choose, their students get to choose from this choice board, um, a few different options of what, how they can show their learning. And if they're online learning right now, you don't wanna give one style of learning or uh, one option for all the students. So they, my students choose at this point how they wanna show their learning and I have tutorials for each of them. They can either write a paragraph, make a paper poster, make a digital poster, record an audio presentation or record a video presentation and then turn that into me. And if you are interested in this choice board, you can just get it in the uh, caption. Uh, but then we go into the STEM challenge and they create their own vehicle and the restraint system for their vehicle. And if you uh, teach STEM, you know about it, great. But I do have a blog post linked um, that kind of goes over the different um, the engineering design process. And it includes a free digital journal you can use with any STEM challenge. And this is kind of really cool because you get to use it over and over again, regardless of what the STEM challenges you find. Um, okay, and I think that is it. I think that is all I've got for you. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, of course, I'm so happy this helped. And at this point, we can say goodbye and I will see you later. Thank you so much.